you how good that you are here with me? How excellent. We warmly welcome you to the sixth class of our highly informative and engaging biblical finance intensive program. Good evening. It is an immense pleasure to be here with all of you. The initiation of our class was signaled by the start of full sail play. Please write in the chat your location and country of residence. How excellent. We are currently on the third day of these highly intensive classes of our superb course, which is our incredibly intensive and comprehensive biblical finance program. Yes, the classes are intensive as they always take place at two different times with different content, consistently following the same schedule during the short duration days of our finance intensive program that spans a condensed period of time. We have a day to start. Yes, we have already started. We are on our third day and we will go until the last day after our 28 classes. Afterwards is the conclusion, but look, let's commence now with a highly significant subject matter. Today's topic is the mindset of a prosperous Christian. Have you had the opportunity to watch the previous classes? Please indicate yes or no by writing in the chat. Currently, we are on our third day of the project. Yes, yes. In this intensive, I bring you a complete content about finances so that you can start having a true financial transformation. Classes are a sequence of events. And if you're truly super committed, where can you find the super committed individuals? Yes, please write in the chat as well. Hashtag incredibly dedicated, incredibly dedicated. Make necessary changes and modifications. Yes, I am aware that you cannot skip any class because every topic covered here is connected and builds on the previous ones. And whoever has been following since the start has witnessed that in every class, there is a class phrase, yes, and also a keyword for you to acquire your complimentary certificate at the conclusion. Okay? And as if they were, I'm sorry, like pieces of a puzzle fitting together perfectly to create a beautiful picture. Look, you have to examine the end, yes? And naturally, this solely applies to individuals who are in the intensive WhatsApp group. Any person in the group can assemble the puzzle and get the free certificate in the end as long as they are present. So take advantage of this opportunity, this answer to your prayer to God to change your financial life and get every piece for free to form this puzzle in your financial life. Okay? Who's with me today? Yes? Write in the chat. I want, I'm here. Yes, yes. How good that you're here. If you haven't seen the previous classes yet, watch them now. And if you arrive late, it's okay. I have positive news for you. Affirmative. It can be highly advantageous, but you need to act quickly. What happens is that many people sent messages asking me to extend the replay of the past classes for a longer time. So I had a discussion with my team earlier today. Yes, and in principle, we will continue to keep all the classes until this upcoming weekend, okay? After that, they'll leave the R, okay? And how do you go about reading these past classes? He, she is currently arriving. Access my YouTube channel, subscribe, and it will display the comprehensive playlist for you with all the classes that are still available to you. Look, I have something to tell you. In previous classes, we discussed the foundation to construct your financial life on the rock. You are about to witness the identity of this rock. This rock represents none other than Jesus Christ himself. And also for your metanoia, your financial transformation, I know that you want to change your mindset in order to have your finances under control and thrive. During the earlier class today, we had a lengthy discussion about debts and talked about it extensively. Look, today I want to discuss with you a topic that I consider to be one of the most significant for your transformation in terms of finances. What is the correct mindset of a Christian, the mindset of a Christian who is prosperous? Do you desire to be a prosperous Christian? Correspond with me in the chat. Yes, I have the desire. I possess financial peace. I possess peace. I possess financial peace. And if you do not comprehend today's lesson, you will not have the ability to definitively transform your finances, correct? 
So remain with me because today there is a great deal of content, yes, and each and every second is valuable for your transformation, okay? Do you consider yourself to have the mindset of a prosperous Christian? That's the first question I have for you today. Write it to me in the chat at this moment. Yes or no, I am going to repeat because it is important. Do you consider yourself to possess the mindset of a financially successful Christian? Yes or no? I would like to watch and read some comments in this place. I am interested in seeing what others have to say. Yes or no? Let me inform you now that you're communicating with me via the chat interface. Who would like to know a secret about it? Yes, would you like to know? I am aware that you enjoy secrets. Yes, yes, look, if you have extra money and invest to make your dreams come true, is it possible to have a prosperous Christian mind? They are two different things. There is extra money, you make it surplus every month and invest it correctly. But if you still can't do it, if you don't have extra money, if you have debts, if you don't invest and multiply the talents that God put in your hands, I guarantee you still don't have a prosperous Christian mind. Do you know why? I will speak to you because I have knowledge in this area. You may or may not be aware, but I provide guidance to a group of individuals in multiple countries, assisting them in managing their finances effectively. This enables them to have additional funds and make investments that align with their understanding of God's intentions. A few months ago, I had a student who told me this. Look, I am going to share a secret with you now. She informed me in such a way, oh my goodness, I am experiencing a hindrance in my progress and I was not aware of it. What have they done to me and for what reason? And how did she come to discover it? I am going to tell you how and why. Look, look, now it is important. It is content from our class. Look, why? She expressed this to me. Because she gained awareness that the financial fruits we generate are the result of the roots we possess. Yes, please take a look. It is crucial to comprehend the connection between our actions and the outcomes we achieve. And those roots are our fundamental convictions. And what exactly is belief, you may ask? Look, belief is an opinion or conviction that is formed as a result of our personal experiences and the knowledge we have acquired. Visualize a tree, a tree that has been planted, fertilized, watered, and there it goes. It goes on its growth journey. Favorable results can only be obtained when the fundamental basis is strong. Yes or yes, is that correct? In the absence of a healthy root, the plant will be unable to yield high-quality fruit that is desirable and beneficial. In the event that this identical tree happens to have deteriorated roots, will the eventual outcomes also be in a deteriorated state or of poor quality? Is it a consequence? Yes or affirmative? Write it to me in the chat. Yes? Are you present? Yes? Look then. And what are these roots in the financial tree that represents the foundation of our lives? Do you know? Beliefs are the things you have faith in. And I am going to have a conversation with you about this. I am going to test you. And that will determine the financial results you have. It will result in the amount of money you have in the bank today. Whether you are in the blue or in overdraft. Yes? Yes? So my belief is that if a billionaire loses all their wealth, they have the ability to reconstruct their entire fortune within a relatively brief period of time. I understand. However, what is the reason behind that? Why do your roots resemble those of a billionaire? And you are unable to change that. Why would there be a process in place? And if someone goes there and steals all the fruits from their tree, what would be the outcome? It is merely a matter of time for that identical tree to commence producing additional fruits and proliferate once more due to the fact that the root remains unchanged. Furthermore, this principle is equally applicable in the reverse scenario. Imagine an individual with a negative mindset, decayed, yes, decayed origins. If you earn a substantial amount of money in a single instance, it would be akin to suspending a plethora of fruit simultaneously on the branches of a tree with feeble roots. What would be the outcome? 
those fruits will drop or be taken and the tree will cease to produce fruit and will not reproduce because it lacks the knowledge of how to do so. That is what happens to individuals who, for instance, are successful in the lottery and unexpectedly lose all of their possessions and are never able to regain them because they lack the knowledge of how to do so. Or someone who is the winner of a television prize and ends up losing everything, it is exactly the same. He does not become wealthy again because riches were not generated from the source. Affirmative or affirmative? Are you present with me? Affirmative? Simply an individual proceeded to that location and placed fruits on a tree that lacked roots to produce those fruits. So look at something very, very important. That is why today I want you to understand that what will make the tree of your financial life prosper and bear fruit are the roots. So the initial lesson for today that I want you to grasp here is you will solely experience the financial outcome of prosperity if your mind is in a state of prosperity. Isn't that right, my friend? Does this make sense to you? Yes or no? I am going to reiterate it because it is of utmost importance. Will you only have the financial result of prosperity? Do you want a prosperous mind? Do you desire prosperity? If your mind is prosperous, if your roots or what you have in your mind, it will be the consequence of your actions and then your results. Does that make sense to you? So look, very well, but some people can look, oh, you offend me. Are you stating that I possess the mindset of an impoverished Christian? Affirmative, affirmative, that is correct. If you fail to produce monetary benefits, I am confident that your financial origins are decayed. We always have a tendency to deny the problem, particularly when it comes to issues related to our finances. It is far simpler to refuse than to acknowledge. We consistently believe that our situation is one of a kind and that it cannot be resolved with a shift in perspective and monetary instruction. But today, you will start to understand it better, to understand your mind. Look, I'm going to give you an example. Pastor Oteres, who participated in the classes of the event and in another Christian week, which is the second phase of this event, also believed that he had no financial problems or difficulties during his involvement in both the classes and the second phase of the event. However, take a look at what Pastor Altieres said. Hello, good morning. I'm Altieres and I met Rich Christian Reality with the intention of helping someone who approached me asking for help. So, like, we always believe that we don't have any problems in this area, particularly me, I have a background concentrated on the financial sector. I am a finance manager by profession. I have an incomplete MBA in audit and forensic accounting. And I am also a pastor at a church here in our city. I was approached by an individual who was experiencing debt issues. So like a while ago, I was awakened by the Lord that I needed to get my financial life in order. But like I've always lived on the edge of what I had without being able to pay all my bills and not being able to save either, uh, except for saving money for future investments, uh, with that mentality always thinking that money is a curse, that money is bad and evil. I had to go through this process of changing my mind, renewing my mind, and thank God the Lord put Rich Christian in my life, because one dawn I was watching a video of the invitation for the week of I Control My Finances, that specific week they give just to get our attention, and I thought it was cool. I shared it with this person who asked me for help. And then I started watching the classes and realized that, in fact, my financial life needed help. So the wealthy Christian assisted me greatly, and I had to gather myself and take action. Results seen. Last month, made first investment of R1-440, negotiated R6-000 bill with interest, ended up R79-000, reached agreement with another bill, cost R623-63, Anyway, there are many things for me to adjust to, but I'm already on the right path, and thanks to God and the rich Christian who supported me, thanks. He, Altieres himself, also held the belief that nothing needed to be altered or modified in any way. However, the reality is that every single one of us requires this shift in mindset, this transformative change in our lives. Certainly, 
in the event that you modify the root of the tree, take a look. Observe that the root of the tree, it is unable to yield different kinds of fruits. If you possess an apple tree root, you will not have the capability to gather bananas. Obviously not, as they are distinct. Do you believe that is logical? Your end? It is logical, yes. It is a natural and essential process. In order to successfully harvest bananas, you need to have the root of a banana tree. Don't you understand? If you have the root of poverty, scarcity, you will not be able to harvest abundance. It's like planting apples and expecting to harvest bananas. This goes against the principle of sowing. By the way, let me tell you something very important. The day after tomorrow in the evening, we will have a special class about sowing, the law of sowing, which I consider one of the most important biblical principles of financial management and also about investments. Make sure to attend and learn valuable insights for your financial future. Interested in being an investor? Don't miss this class, okay? You'll be amazed. And this is the law of sowing, providing valuable insights for your investment journey. This will be the basis of our investment class that will be next Saturday, okay? But today I want to delve even deeper, a little bit more, into beliefs about money. I want to offer you another example, very, very crucial, right? I want you to grasp this fundamental concept for you to make a transformation. Imagine now a computer, right? If you have one there, one in your house, a computer. Imagine the physical part of the computer, which are the electronic chips you have, the components and circuits that make up the computer, right? Do you have a physical part? Yes, keyboard, mouse, the screen, in short, everything. But none of this functions without programming. Every computer possesses an operating system. It can be Windows, it can be Mac, or any other operating system. It's not enough to have the computer. You have to program it to make it work. The physical part of the computer is what is called hardware. The programming part is called software. The same situation occurs on your mobile phone that is currently in your possession. The phone without programming doesn't work. WhatsApp isn't recruiting. January and around there, definitely. And other things more. You need an operating system that is a programming, okay? So look here. This operating system is where all the programs are recruited, right? Why have I informed you of this? Because God created your body, your mind, and your brain. However, this brain has the ability to operate in various ways depending on its programming. The head, the brain, the physical part is similar to the hardware of a computer. The programming of that hardware, which is responsible for decision making, including financial decisions and making things work in one's life, is accomplished through a set of pre-existing beliefs. These beliefs serve as the roots, representing the foundation of one's thinking and actions. So let's do it. Look. Look, by the way, beliefs are the thoughts that are considered to be true for each and every individual person. All your beliefs are beliefs, and your brain makes decisions every single day based on these beliefs. Is that correct? Are they present? We have studies that show that the majority of our beliefs are formed before the age of seven, in the early years of life. If beliefs are not always true or false, correct or incorrect, then the response to the question is no. They are merely strong opinions that are based on the thoughts and perspectives of individuals. The fact is that we do not perceive the world as it actually is. We perceive the world based on our own beliefs and perspectives. And that is because our thoughts give rise to the reality and shape the world we experience. In fact, we can state that our beliefs have the ability to empower us or render us incapable of doing something. Is this a highly potent factor? Yes, it's strong content. Where are the super committed? Yes, message me in chat. I'm super committed. Hashtag super committed, hashtag super committed. Let's go with enthusiasm tonight. It's great content to have a prosperous mind. Who wants to change your mind? We are going to change the base. 
To identify your beliefs, just observe your current life and see what you can learn from it. What is your perspective on the world? The world is contained within you. As a result, your behavior, whether active or inactive, is always shaped by your prevailing beliefs and thoughts. Yes? So understand that true wealth is not seen with the eyes. Not seen with the eyes, no, but with the mind, with what you think. That enduring wealth, which constitutes your money tree, is a valuable asset that is built upon the foundation of money. So I need to tell you something to continue here. Look, it's a very important phrase. Actions lead to outcomes. Please write this sentence in the chat right now without any delay or hesitation. Actions produce outcomes. However, consider what factors influence my decision to take or refrain from taking action. They are my beliefs, my programming, my software. Thus, we can assert that thoughts, what you believe, give rise to actions that in turn generate results, outcomes, and consequences. Super. So write to me in the chat now. Thoughts, what you believe, generate actions that generate results. Thoughts create actions that yield results. Let's check the Bible. If you believe, let's refer to the Bible. Because I know that the Bible works in your country. What I'm talking about here is in the Bible. If the Bible works in your country, you can do what I'm talking about now. Look at what Psalm, Psalm 139 says. And you are familiar with me. You are aware of my sitting down and standing up. From a distance, you perceive my thoughts. This psalm regarding thoughts is extremely powerful. Henry Ford, for instance, used to state that whether you believe you can or you cannot, in either case, you are correct. Observe the strength of your thoughts. Therefore, anyone who believes that money is negative, for instance, will push away, will push away money from their existence. I reiterate because it's very powerful. Because we will always make an effort to avoid what we perceive as unfavorable and attract what we perceive as favorable in order to create the life we desire. And this is something automatic, unconscious. And if I believe something is bad internally, I instinctively run away from it. I attempt, apologize. If I think something is unfavorable, I automatically try, automatically powerful, affirmative. I instinctively try to escape from it, from something that is bad for me. It is an unconscious thing. And what does God say about this belief in the Bible? We search in the Bible. Yes? Do you believe in the Bible? Yes or yes? Yes or yes? We can see that she doesn't condemn the rich or wealth. According to the Bible, the love of money is considered to be the root cause of all evil in the world. It is present in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. Team, please enter 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10 in the chat. Money itself is not bad. Do you see the distinction? It is the affection for money. That means you can become a wealthy individual, but you should not have an intense desire for it at any cost. To adore riches, to adore wealth at any cost, with monetary resources, devoid of a loftier objective. No, you are required to put the money in his place. Money serves as a tool to fulfill God's purposes and should be utilized accordingly. Money is a tool. Greed and avarice are the vices that can corrupt and distort its true purpose. They are traps from the enemy for our lives. And the enemy wants to kill, steal, and destroy your dreams. It is in John 10.10. 10. The thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come so that you may have life and have it abundantly. Look, the abundance. Is this what the rock Jesus desires or expects from you? Do you desire this for your life? This is the statement made by Jesus Christ. The situation is that there are individuals who dedicate their whole lives to an unceasing endeavor of attaining wealth, only to ultimately lose sight of fulfilling their life's purpose, their calling, which is their mission, the divine call bestowed upon them by God. See, the Apostle Paul in his letter to Timothy stated, see now team, 1 Timothy 6 verses 9 and 10. 
Those who desire wealth often succumb to temptation, ensnared by traps and overwhelmed by uncontrolled and harmful desires. These destructive tendencies can lead individuals to ruin and utter devastation. The teachings of the Bible provide further insight into this matter. Because the love of money is the root of all evil, some have turned away from the faith and have tormented themselves with many sufferings because of their greed for money. As you can see, the Apostle Paul is not condemning the individual who is affluent, no, but rather the aspiration to acquire wealth at any cost or sacrifice. When would you like to enhance yourself at any expense? Yes, yes, take a look at this. Pursuing self-enrichment at any cost distances you from your purpose. Why? What is the primary focus of your endeavors? You are moving away from the dream that God has for your life. This is strong. Do you understand? Yes, yes, or yes. Write in the chat now. And look, this is very deep that I'm going to talk to you about now. There are many wealthy people who understand God's plan for their lives and use their money as a tool to do what God wants to be done. Your mission, your purpose, this is the path that leads to true wealth for Christians. This is the perspective of a genuinely prosperous-minded Christian. You see, this mindset is completely different from simply wanting to get rich in order to satisfy your own desires and cravings. The generation of wealth for a Christian has more to do with others than with oneself. I consistently emphasize this point with my team. Everything has a greater emphasis on others rather than oneself. I always make a point of discussing this topic. And this is the generation of wealth. This basic desire to fulfill their own desires renders them incapable of discerning God's will for their life and prevents them from experiencing true fulfillment and purpose. Due to their complete focus on acquiring increasing amounts of money, even if it is solely to satisfy their own desires, when this goes against God's true desire for their life, it is not aligned with their ultimate purpose. Certainly, you can derive pleasure from the money you have earned. Enjoy indeed. Actually, this is a biblical principle that I'll inform you even in the midst of Christian week. Yes, there is a beginning of enjoyment, which is the Christian week. Yes, they are arriving now. During Christian week, we focus on the second stage of this course. One crucial aspect is teaching my students the principle of deserving what they get, which is highly beneficial. The enjoyment they experience is a key component of their learning journey. And if you are not enjoying part of your money, you are also disagreeing with the Bible. I'm going to tell you more about this at Christian week. I control my finances. Let's get to work, okay? Starting next Thursday, okay? The primary issue here, look, I am referring to the mind that is experiencing prosperity because I am aware that you have a desire to cultivate a prosperous mind. You have a desire to cultivate a prosperous Christian mind. Yes or yes, write in the chat. Yes, yes. The problem is when you understand that money is only for that, only for enjoyment. However, it is not only for that purpose. Recall the recurring message we emphasize here. Money serves as a means to accomplish God's objectives and should not be regarded as the ultimate goal, but rather as a vehicle. Not the end, but as a means. Okay? Yes or yes? Do you understand? Look more very intense content today. Yes, yes. Additionally, what I found to be intriguing is that during the launch of the initial session, which is the program I personally guide, I became aware of a significant demand from individuals struggling with a negative mindset when it comes to finances. And this happened a long time ago. Yes, because there have already been dozens of more groups. Yes, we already had more groups from the program I Control My Finances. However, even in the initial class, I was able to grasp the full extent of how individuals are limited when they lack the mindset of a prosperous Christian and the degree to which people are enslaved by their erroneous mentality regarding money, don't you think? A very important thing here, an appointment here. When you have many negative beliefs about money, they repeat phrases that prevent prosperity. Because some people think like this, oh, I have a prosperous mind. 
But let's do an exercise here now with me, okay? If you speak a sentence like this, the phrases I hear the most are, and they are phrases from people, they are phrases that prevent those people from prospering. What are they? Phrases such as, I do not have money for anything. I do not have time. I do not have money. It is not my place to study about investment. Being rich is not for me. I cannot do it. I earn very little. I am extremely old. And the truth is that these kinds of beliefs are similar to the trash that you put underneath the rug. They are hindering your prosperity. And I desire for you to thrive and support your mind to turn you into a slave to wealth. One additional matter, one additional piece of content. Look, Robert Kiyosaki states in his book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which is a best-selling book, that when his father, who had less money, wanted something, he would say, I cannot afford it. However, his wealthy father would inquire, how am I able to financially manage it? Indeed, your publication, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. The mindset of the first fatherly figure, poor, I lack the financial means to afford it. Regarding the second one, it is related to abundance. Specifically, his father is wealthy. And that generates outcomes. The more security you require in your life, the more scarcity there is in existence. Yes, the greater your competitiveness, the higher the level of scarcity that will exist in your life. Having the vision to serve a larger number of individuals is more about abundance and expanding our reach. We have been created by God to serve. Christian life has much more to do with others than with ourselves. I really like talking about this and I teach this to my students, to my team. I repeat because this is very important. The Christian life is primarily about others and serving rather than being focused solely on ourselves. Here is a key to the prosperous mind so that you become a wealthy Christian. And the most incredible thing is that the more we serve, the more we are also rewarded economically. It is a consequence. That is why I have no issue paying thousands and thousands of dollars. For instance, $50,000 for a mentoring per year. For specializations and mentorships also to enhance our project and assist me and my team in serving and transforming an increasing number of individuals. Because I possess an abundance mindset, individuals with a scarcity mindset would state that I am insane for making that payment. But the truth is that when I have this mindset, that money returns to me on numerous occasions, repeatedly with actions. When I limit myself to investing in information that makes me have more money, serve more people, and fulfill my purpose, I am telling my brain that my world is scarce. No, no, I won't do that. But is it a scarcity mentality? Do I limit myself? When I limit myself, I won't invest? I am not going to do something that is going to make me have more money. When do I limit myself? But when I have an abundance mindset, what is it like? Does it force me to be creative? It forces me to share, to serve more people, to have good financial skills, I increasingly develop my financial intelligence, my gifts, my talents, and the result of that is a belief. Yes, growing, growing financial abundance in my life and in my family and in the people who are with me. Now imagine with me a coin, right? I don't have a coin here. Look at a coin. I do not have a coin here. How unfortunate. Wait, do you remember a coin now? The coin has two sides, right? Yes, when an individual says, on one hand, I am unable to afford it, they are examining one aspect of the situation. Currently, he states, you express it in this manner, ah, uh, how am I able to make a payment? You commence to observe the other side of the coin, right? You're not expressing, ah, I always possess, no. You're viewing the opposite perspective. How can I make a payment? How can I go about doing this? The issue is that when you solely observe one side, Upon viewing the opposite side, you solely perceive it. That is the reason why the poor think when they see the rich doing what they do only superficially, because they cannot see what they are doing inside their minds, the other things that are happening. 
If you desire to witness the opposite perspective in actuality, you must observe the contents of the mindset of an affluent individual, which encompasses their convictions. The beliefs that I focus on in mentoring with my students in the entire program called I Control My Finances amount to a total of 77 beliefs. There is an exercise that has 77 beliefs. Look how much that they are worked on. And I do a true cleaning of those beliefs so that they can be unblocked and prosper in a positive manner. It is something extremely important. And numerous individuals have approached me about mentoring as well. But currently, I do not have any openings at the present time. If you called my team today, I want to join the mentoring. Give me the complete program. I control my finances. No vacancy, okay? There is no vacancy. So I ask you, are you one of those people who say many negative beliefs during the day? I do not have that. I do not have money. Look, now concentrate on our course, on our intensive program. Look now here. Yes? 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 Do you say a lot of no during your day? Yes? Did you know during the day? Yes? Did you know that what you think multiplies? Do you believe in that? Yes? And that, that is biblical. Yes, yes, I do believe in it, without a doubt. Look in your Bible, Proverbs 23, 7. Team, now put in the chat, Proverbs 23, 7. As you think, that is what you become. So, have you ever wondered how many times you have declined to say no today at any point during the day? Ah, I am unable to do that. I lack funds. That is not meant for me. I have this dream, but unfortunately, I do not have any money. If you state that you are unable to afford anything during the day, then you are expressing that you are similar to that. And that, according to Proverbs 23, 7, do you remember? Yes, I spoke here, just as you think. That's how you are. So, what occurs? Take a look here. The main thoughts that go through the heads of these individuals must be carefully reviewed and assessed. We need to modify this schedule, and that is achievable. Correct? Because this software, these beliefs, these roots will not guide you to improved outcomes. Yes or yes. Yes or yes. Where are the highly committed individuals? Do you receive extremely committed, extremely committed? It is possible. Yes, yes. And in order to give you an idea, there are a multitude of people who do not take advantage of the intensive course because they do not believe that the 28 classes in addition to all the material from the second stage, along with the Facebook community, the brochures from the second stage are completely free of charge. I do not have faith in it because this is deeply ingrained in their origins. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Those individuals fail to improve themselves by utilizing all this information, all of the information that you have available, because they are simply lacking trust. And in actuality, she is distrustful because she perceives the world as she is and not as things truly are in reality. Is that correct? Or am I missing something? What you think reflects more who you are, the truth about it. Right? I'm going to repeat because it's important. Your thoughts are a true reflection of your identity, carrying more weight than the objective reality. Okay? Yes? Take a moment to reflect on the importance of your thoughts. So, if you are present in the chat and find yourself complaining about my repetition, stating that you have already heard it, this also reveals something about your character. It suggests that you are someone who frequently complains about things, but lacks the virtue of patience, which is commonly referred to as the fruit of the Spirit. And these are symptoms of individuals who are impatient and make unwise financial decisions as a result of their impatience. That they go to that place and make bad decisions because they do not seek the correct learning. Would you like to see another example of their misguided choices? Some believe the testimonials from my students who, by the way, are numerous. We have a lot, a lot of testimonials, hundreds and hundreds. Are they manufactured by actors? Oh my goodness, I should engage in acting and have a multitude of actors. Have you ever thought about how many actors would be needed for so many testimonies? Different actors in different places. I cannot even comprehend that it is feasible to eliminate debts and begin praying in order to have additional funds to invest within a span of 60 days. 
And why can they not believe it? What is the reason? It is because the world they see today does not allow it to be believed. Are you aware? It is the realm of those individuals who do not grant themselves the opportunity to observe this, to observe that it is within reach and can be accomplished. In their origins, in their convictions, this does not exist. This is extremely powerful. They're your heritage. Your thoughts are the source of your actions and the catalyst for your results. There is a highly acclaimed book that I have a deep appreciation for titled The Mindset, authored by Carol Dweck. He states that there are two categories of thinking, individuals with a fixed mindset and individuals with a growth mindset. Individuals possessing a fixed mindset believe that their level of intelligence is predetermined from birth and remains unchanged. People with a growth mindset think they cannot do this. So how can they acquire the skills to learn and achieve it? Are you willing to accept the challenge and not simply state that this is not suitable for me? Do you believe it is feasible to enhance your abilities? Do individuals with a fixed mindset believe that their qualities are incapable of being changed? How terrible! Have they been born with an unchanging intelligence? Conversely, a growth mindset believes that they are capable of cultivating their qualities through their own efforts and experiences instead of being bound by inherent limitations. Take, for instance, individuals such as Elvis Presley who were regarded as ordinary until they distinguished themselves and refused to be satisfied with a single result. They are individuals who know I possess a growth mindset. Now I inquire, have you ever contemplated something similar to that? Being wealthy is not for individuals such as myself. Are we approaching the conclusion? Will we possess substance? I inquire of you something of utmost importance at this very moment. What is your current state of mind? What is your mental outlook today? Have you ever pondered something of that nature? Being rich is not for people like me. Striving for wealth eliminates free time, leaving no room for other aspects of life. Being rich results in a lack of time for my family. If you believe in any of these beliefs that I have discussed with you up to this point, during this live stream, in this video, if you believe this is extremely significant, well, I must inform you of something. You are a strong contender to experience financial difficulties for the remainder of your life. But please make a note of that at this moment. You can certainly modify your mindset, which is your mentality. Let's proceed with changing this for the better. It is indeed possible. Yes, it is. And investing in your financial intelligence is an integral part of it. Even that's what I teach in budget distribution strategies based on biblical principles, which you will see there in the second phase, which is the Christian week. I control my finances that you initiate the task on Thursday of the upcoming week, starting from the specified date provided. The Christian week is absolutely fantastic because we get down to business, which is a great and effective strategy for distributing the budget and ensuring optimal allocation of resources. And if you do not invest in your financial intelligence, you can win the lottery today, you can make a lot of money, but there will always be a programming that will make you lose that money to the point of not having it. Is that so? Why does this happen? Can you explain the reason behind this phenomenon? Distance yourself from anything that is not good for you. A couple of months ago, I had the opportunity to do a live stream session with my mentor, Ana Maria, on my Instagram platform. And he informed me that he now has a new brain. I want to show you a snippet from speech so that you can understand the importance. And when we locate an individual who is genuinely present and prepared to assist, it is truly fantastic, doctor. We have a sensation of floating. I am experiencing a feeling of lightness on this particular day. I feel as light as a feather. Do I have any problems? I have comprehended it. I am still actively involved in carrying out my engineering tasks. And I still continue, like the goals that I set last year, I renewed them this year and the things that come from there to finish, I put them within the goals of this year. And so I'm following much lighter, much lighter because everything becomes clear after this course. It's like I won. 
like I've been given a new brain as a gift. I obtained a brand new brain that functions more effectively. Do not allow me to make a mess because lacking financial education, we tend to make numerous mistakes and simply end up in a deeper state of trouble. Amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And she is a freelance worker. He owns a shop that had a large amount of debt. He told me that before he used to get into debt, but now he invests. And what changed in his life in 60 days was precisely financial education. If you think that studying about money is not important, money takes care of you. This is very powerful. If you believe that being wealthy is negative, your brain will compel you to eliminate all the money you acquire. It is a shock mechanism used to provide reinforcement and strengthen your belief system. And Christians still have additional aggravating factors that continue to deteriorate our roots. Look, how is this? And the primary one of those roots is the belief that the wealthy do not go to heaven. Yes, if you believe in this, yes, yes, certainly, yes. Look, I'm going, please explain to me now. Explain to me if you would. A lot of people, when they see the name of this channel, for example, think it's something ridiculous. Why can't a Christian be wealthy? How can a Christian be wealthy? Yes, indeed, when you catch sight of the name, yes, it traverses your mind that it is something preposterous. It seizes your attention. And have you ever wondered about it? Or maybe at least you had a little curiosity. And why did that happen? Because some misconceptions have prevented Christians from taking care of their finances in the way that the Bible teaches. And this is typical. They are misunderstandings. Have you ever paused to consider whether you hold the belief that the wealthy do not go to heaven? Yes, yes, or no? Write it to me in the chat, yes or no? I want, write it to me in the chat, yes or no? Look, this belief hinders numerous Christians from maintaining control over their finances. And I'll give you some examples now. When you see a person in a luxury car, what do you think at that particular moment? Uh, do you believe this individual who is driving a Ferrari will be able to survive or not? Will he go to heaven or not? A lot of individuals you are aware of. Are you aware that the vehicle in which the individual is located has no connection to their deliverance when accepting Jesus Christ as their savior? However, there are individuals indeed who possess such pessimistic beliefs regarding money that they link affluence with circumstances similar to this, circumstances resembling a vehicle. Involuntarily, the church in general, without pointing fingers at anyone now, has consistently taught that it is detrimental to possess material wealth. I am well informed about this widely held belief and its implications. That God despises the rich and that financial success is something that is not for Christians, that is bad. However, on the other hand, there are some who preach that prosperity can only be achieved through giving, leading to frustration on both ends. Because they do not accurately portray the biblical truth regarding matters of finances. I am present in this place to open your eyes. So if you believe it is incorrect for a Christian to be prosperous in the present day, just imagine Jesus in a poor preserve or a disadvantaged refuge, struggling to make ends meet and facing hardships. And this provides you with the notion that this is the optimal thing for your life. However, the actuality is not like this, genuinely. This is not what is in the Bible in terms of biblical principles. Jesus also had a treasurer to handle the money for his ministry. Yes, have you ever contemplated that? And an individual who had a treasurer is someone with possessions and financial resources. So if you have some knowledge of the Bible, you're likely already recalling the well-known passage of the wealthy young man with Jesus uttering the phrase, do you recollect that a camel passes through the eye of a needle, that a wealthy man enters the kingdom of heaven? Affirmative. Then proceed to examine Matthew 19.24 at this moment. Team, input Matthew 19.24 into the chat for reference. And I say again, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. 
Look, we are reaching the end of our class. We are excited. Many people interpret this biblical passage with the incorrect vision, which I will explain to you during today's class. The truth is that God created money for the same purpose as all other things. Yes, to serve his divine and sovereign purposes in the world. With money, it's the same thing. In the first class, we talked a lot about it. And if you haven't seen it yet, it's on YouTube from the channel. However, it will not be long. No, all classes are going off the airwaves. Yes, because our biblical finance intensive program has a designated start day and a specified end day for participants. In any case, conclude here, proceed to the YouTube channel and view all the classes you have not yet watched and make sure to do so because they are still accessible. All right. Okay. Okay. However, as I have already informed you, this intensive is a sequence. It has different content, including all the classes. And I have to say with the content here, I have to continue. Sorry, I'm going to give you more content now. I'm not going to return what's in class one. It's important that you look later. Okay. I desire for you to understand at this present moment that God views our life as a trust assignment. Isn't that right? Look, our time, our intelligence, opportunities, resource relationships are gifts that God has entrusted us to take care of and manage well, right? We are never truly owners of anything during our brief tenure on earth, as our time here is transient and impermanent. We are administrators of everything that God gives us. So we are administrators of everything, everything that God gives us. Yes or yes. A very important thing here. The more he provides us with, the more responsible he anticipates us to be. And this implies that every action we take, even the most basic tasks, have a direct impact on the earthly realm. The money that you place in your hands is an assignment of trust that comes from him and is entrusted to you. God utilizes the domain of finances to teach us to trust in him and to test our reliability, demonstrating his faithfulness and revealing our character. Yes, God desires for us to possess wisdom in order to effectively manage the things that he entrusts to us in our hands. Observe at this moment what the Bible states in the book of Luke, chapter 16, verse 11. Team, put Lucas 16, 11 in the chat. Consequently, if they lack trustworthiness in handling the wealth of this corrupt world, who will confide in them with genuine riches? This guiding principle is commonly known as the principle of Christian stewardship, emphasizing the responsible management and care of resources entrusted to individuals by their faith. Another biblical principle of finance, that's why I always talk about several biblical principles of finance. And this, which is located in Luke 16, 11, signifies the commencement of Christian stewardship. When you possess the understanding that you are a steward and administrator of what belongs to God, the key to your mindset undergoes changes. It's not yours, it's God's. That's why I say there are people so poor that they only have money. Material possessions alone cannot guarantee true wealth because a person who lacks inner abundance is impoverished in every aspect of life. Even if you possess a significant amount of money in your pocket, you will always feel a sense of lacking something. Yes, money without a spiritual purpose can lead you towards a dangerous and destructive path in life. The pleasures that money provides are seductive, and when you least expect it, you will become obsessed with earning more and more money without realizing that you can become a selfish, dishonest, greedy, envious, anxious person, and much more. So look, we are approaching the conclusion of this class. Let's go. Let's go. I am going to discuss the phrase of God's grace for today, as well as the key word. Material wealth without a spiritual purpose. That is the reason for your presence here. For learning finance in the light of the Bible. That isolates you from the love of God. And surrounds you with individuals with incorrect perspectives who believe that wealth is the ultimate factor for happiness. Of course, this is not it. And in this way, it prevents him from truly exercising the law of true servitude. Look, money is a tool to fulfill God's purposes on earth. The more individuals you serve, the more funds you earn. And here we start to have an indication as to why Jesus instructed the wealthy young man. 
Go and sell all the things you possess. That is in the book of Matthew chapter 19, verses 21. Because you do not have any spiritual purpose with your money. You do not possess any purpose. Yes, and this is very dangerous. Without a spiritual purpose, it is wiser not to be rich. Yes, I need to open a parenthesis with you right now. Very important. Are they here? Where can the super committed be found? Yes, I mentioned in the chat. I am extremely committed, highly committed. Yes, yes, I have financial peace. Look, Jesus did not say that being wealthy was bad. No, definitely not. The problem with the rich young man is not his wealth, but rather his strong attachment and devotion to his material possessions and financial status. It is the heart. However, it must be made clear that Jesus was not stating that a wealthy individual can never experience salvation. To clarify, I was not reproaching the possession of wealth, but rather the state of being possessed by it and unable to break free from its control. This is very clear. In the context in which this biblical passage appears, in which Jesus speaks with the rich young man who was not able to renounce his possessions to follow him, Yes? Where was your heart? It is also important to understand the historical context of this. Look, the camel was the most sizable and magnificent animal in Palestine, and the eye of a needle, the tiniest and narrowest of passageways, was akin to a diminutive door referred to as a donkey. Jesus utilized numerous examples in order to ensure that people could comprehend his message. That is why the stories, testimonies, and examples of Jesus are extremely valuable. Then Jesus elaborated on his meaning by providing an example in order to teach his disciples using a complete exaggeration as a tool to emphasize his point and ensure clarity. In the linguistic meaning of things, Jesus used this expression to compose his teaching. Next important parenthesis here about the Bible. Let's go back to the beliefs here. Yes? Yes, want to see another belief I've heard a lot? Yes, as a mentor of financial life, I'm going to talk to you now. Yes, if I become rich, some people who speak like this, ah, doctor, if I become rich, they will want something from me. People will want something from me. In this way, do you think only interested people will approach you? Is that your belief? Think differently currently. If you have money, you possess more money. Can you bless more people? other individuals more. Think differently now. Have you ever thought like this? Yes? If I get overwhelmed, they will want something from me. Pay attention. Doc, but if you need money to make money, you can think like this. I don't have money, but one vital thing. The person might think if they had invested money, they would have more money, but it's not like that. No. Look, I'm going to explain it to you now. All of this is limiting thinking. They are erroneous programming that will not prosper you in anything. If you believe it's challenging, if you believe it's not feasible, you will discover a method to evade from it, from what you believe is not possible. A person told me that he likes to buy. Yes, I also like to buy, but he told me that he doesn't like to sell to a person. But look, I started thinking, yes, it's about the same action. Because if there is one person buying, there is another person selling. You can only buy if someone sells to you. Then the person said that she is not rich because she gets along well with sales. So this is the most negative sentence I have ever heard in my entire life, without a doubt. Because you see, we are selling all the time. It is the act of selling our idea, our thoughts, our opinion. Look, your young son, when he wants something from you, he is also selling you his idea to persuade you. Your son, so I tell you, who has a problem with the sale? Do you have a problem with your income? That is the simplicity of it, I am aware. Therefore, you must ensure to have breakfast. Always keep breakfast in your mind. And not bother you with that action when someone offers you something to purchase. Blessed be, because it is a person who is providing a service to you. Yes, it is something very good. Turn the sale into something positive and your actions will change. 
When we talk about changing mentality, transforming a belief, it is about stepping out of the comfort zone. It is like the diamond that transforms with the friction of rocks. Were you aware of this? The diamond does not undergo transformation in its comfort zone? No. But when it encounters the friction of the rocks, it experiences something very uncomfortable. At this moment, I am suggesting something. Do the exercise of spending the whole day tomorrow talking only about positive things, okay? Yes? Make the purpose of not complaining about anything. Do not claim anything tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, okay? Don't blame the crisis, don't blame the politicians or anything else for your outcome. Your outcome is merely a reflection of your beliefs, which are the core of your existence. Well, now that I am finishing our class, we are reaching the end. Yes, yes, but I am going to talk to you. I am going to tell you the phrase of the day now. Yes, yes. One very important thing as well, blaming God or waiting for his miracle is useless if you don't do your part. Faith lacking action is weak. As stated in the Bible, faith without works is dead and devoid of any meaningful impact. If you have faith in the Bible, you have faith in what I am saying. Recall what Romans 12, 2 is stating. Team, kindly put in the chat our most recent verse, specifically Romans 12, 2. Please refrain from conforming to the pattern of this world, but instead allow yourself to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In order for you to have the opportunity to encounter and confirm the good, pleasing, and flawless intention of God. How delectable, superb. So if you've modified your mindset today with all the information I provided you, go ahead and create a story on your Instagram, okay? But let me appreciate it down here as well. And on Instagram, the phrase of the day that I'm going to talk about now, which is the topic of discussion at this moment. I am certain that you will share your abundant knowledge with the people you know. Okay, and the phrase for today's class is the expression that you think represents the class. So that is who you are. Yes, it's the sentence of the class. And look, there are three errors that hinder financial control for people. Yes, yes. And I'll tell you these mistakes during the Christian week. I manage my finances, which is the largest online finance event for Christians in America and globally. Yes, there are thousands and thousands of people. In Christian Week, I control my finances. It is an exclusive, closed, and free event only for registered participants to attend. You must also join the WhatsApp group. The link is situated down below this video. And also, if you haven't registered yet, kindly enter the link that is positioned down below and guarantee your cool thing that is free of charge. And also, Please make sure to share this link with other people through your invitation link, okay? Here in the classes, I will assist you in changing your mindset. And during the Christian Week event, we will engage in practical activities with closed Facebook communities, exercises, and reinforcement classes too. To reiterate, today's phrase is, just like you, just like you think, that's how you are, okay? The key word to access your complimentary participation certificate in the WhatsApp groups. Yes, the word is metanoia. Yes, metanoia. Don't forget to use it. What do we need to do now? I'll talk to you. One, what will you do? Create a stories with the phrase from the class and tag a christianurico.ofc. We will share the stories you create. All right. Two, suggest the event to numerous, numerous individuals. Invite many more people to be blessed with biblical wisdom in financial life that we are here. Three, if you have missed the previous classes, they will be look in the area for a few more hours on the YouTube channel. However, there is still time to see them, but they will be leaving the area soon. Four, the class scheduled for tomorrow will be held at the same time as usual and will cover the topic of negotiating debts. The class scheduled for the evening will focus on the law of sowing. If you do not want to miss it, please come and feel free to bring someone else along, okay? Yes or yes.
Yes, that is good. Now the team is going to show you a video with some individuals who have transformed their lives through the Bible. So I will see you in the morning. May God bless you. Looking forward to seeing you soon. Because after the rich Christian, I start to see life in a different way. My financial problems were fading away. A mortgage on my house, which I would take another eight years to pay off. I tell you that today I own a paid off house. There are several other debts that were troubling me and having the ability to do something that had not occurred in years in my life. Having extra money, having extra money of mine, my money never used to be extra. So managing to have some extra to invest as advised by the rich Christian in the portfolio we are following, following the completion of the course, I successfully managed to have some money left over from my salary, which was an achievement I hadn't been able to accomplish for a number of years. I managed to pay off the debts, a debt of 23,958, if I'm not mistaken at the time. In a span of 60 days, I managed to completely pay off this debt. This to me was an invaluable accomplishment that I can't put a price on. In addition to that debt, later on I also paid off another debt, so for me this was crucial. So at this point in time, now that I have a certain amount of money left over from my salary, I started making an investment as well, I began investing some money. And I did not have a car, I used to walk. I have a car now, it is not a fancy one, but I have a car in my garage now. This, in my opinion, is absolutely priceless. Wow, what an overwhelming feeling. I am filled with immense happiness and gratitude. I state that the wealthy Christian was positioned in my existence at a critical juncture. It was of utmost importance. So, the rich Christian was truly remarkable. It compelled me to completely empty myself and wholeheartedly believe that those incredible people were there to provide unwavering support, invaluable mentorship, and invaluable guidance on how to truly eliminate debts, achieve a well-balanced financial life, make wise investments, generate additional income, unearth hidden talents, and gain clarity on my desired path in life. I've already organized myself. I no longer have to borrow from loan sharks. I no longer have the private shops and businesses I had before because it was getting difficult. Everything is under control. My financial life is completely under control. I don't have that worry. One of the things I constantly had was power cuts. I couldn't handle it. Today I don't have. Sometimes I see a cutting car passing by and I breathe like this. Then I don't have. I'm calm. Everything is up to date. The year 2020 was the first year that ended that I ended with 1,500 reis. I can say, thanks to the rich Christian, I'm at peace. I can have a much calmer financial life. Financially, I'm not a slave to finances. The debts already existed, car financing, still paying for it, so there were quite a few things there. Open debts, paying for land in installments, right? So that bar where we stayed, wow, and now what are we going to do, right? And that's when I started studying. I started the course slowly and began to see the transformations, many transformations. Reduction in bills, surprisingly, I learned to do extra activities that we didn't even pay attention to before because we were in our comfort zone. So I acquired new skills and knowledge. I established an online store through the course where they educate us on the importance of continuous self-improvement, undergoing a shift in mindset, thoughts and attitudes, and constantly striving to better ourselves. And that helped a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So with each step I took within the course, I saw the changes. And in the end, it was success, total success, both material and spiritual. It was wonderful. I had some loans which were insured. And there we learned how to reduce these loans, how to pay, how to pay off these loans. And we kept practicing this, exercising control. For us, it wasn't enough to do things halfway. It only served us to do it right, to do it completely. Today, I am able to sleep in peace. The complete transformation in our lives has been absolutely incredible and utterly profound. I initiated the story by discussing the debts I had, and presently, we are actively engaged in the process of making investments. My dear friend and partner in this venture, we are investors. At this moment, we were able to contribute and provide assistance to individuals in need, which is also a very impressive principle that makes a difference in people's lives. Today, I feel at peace. Today, I sleep peacefully. We still face our life's challenges. It doesn't stop. 
but today I can plan, organize myself to achieve, reaching new things every day.